Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Podcast. My name is Stu Turley, President of the Sandstone Group. Today is a just fun show. Michael's out on assignment. He's actually trying to work for a living. Uh, let's start out with the first story. Visualizing the rise of the U.S. as top crude oil producer. Pretty darn cool. But it, that is a worldwide global phenomenon that we have to give a shout out to our folks. OPEC sees the world demand increasing by 1.8 million barrels per day in 2025. Whatever happened to uh, uh, end of fossil fuels, we're going to kind of love uh, visiting about that. NDP anti-fossil fuel advertising draft legislation worthy of both the 1956 Soviet RSFSR criminal code or the other end of the political spectrum. This is from our good buddy up there, Terry Edom up in Canada and the BOE report. I uh, just love Terry Edom. Go buy his book. It's pretty darn cool. Uh, let's also come around the corner to our buddies up there in uh, York, Lanchester. Uh, legislators unite to oppose the 2.3 hydroelectric project in uh, Saskatchewan. I'll tell you, the NIMBYs, not in my backyard, are alive and well in this one. So this will be kind of fun to visit with. And then Russia extends an LNG su uh, supplies to German player until 2040. I think there's a lot more that we're going to read into this story, and I'll cover that in here in just a sec. So let's get starting out with the first story, visualizing the rise of the U.S. as top crude oil producer i'll tell you uh miss producer if you could slide in this first uh graphic here this is from visualizing uh, uh elements of visual capitalist.com i recommend you go follow them here is take a look at this chart it is an amazing chart from them uh, 11.9 million barrels daily crude oil production in 2022. Saudi Arabia, 10.6 million. Russia, 10.3 million. And then the next in line was Canada and Iraq at 4.5 million. China at 4.1 million. UAE at 3.5 million. And Iran at 3.3. Brazil was at 3. And Kuwait was at 2.8. Unbelievable visual graphic there. What the side effect of this is, is that in the second order of magnitude is that we like to talk about on the show. Michael has really been uh, uh, leading that conversation all the time. Take a look at Saudi Arabia and the United States, and nobody realized that even with the Biden administration being at war with um, the energy sector, not just the oil and gas, they're just taking on every piece of uh, energy they can through uh, legislation, through regulatory actions, and they're just anti-energy. So when you take a look at our great oil and gas folks have really notched it up, even without any help from the government. Saudi Arabia is now in a little bit of a pickle that is not talked about in here. And I got to give a shout out to David Blackman because he's been bringing this up in Tammy Nemeth and Irina Slav. When we sit back and take a look, uh, Saudi Arabia has, a, they're using their profits to fund the green energy. But I was reading an article last night that when you take a look at Saudi Arabia's output, it, they're not putting money back into uh, the oil and gas market right now because their quotas, they're not going to be able to increase any of their quotas anytime soon. So they've got their proven reserves. Why put the capital in right now? Why not just spend it on the renewables? I got to hand it again to the Saudi Arabian leadership for taking care of Saudi first, looking at, at uh, really 
investing in renewable energy and becoming a balanced leader around the world. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and go back to the next one here. OPEC sees the world demand increasing by 1.8 million barrels per day in 2025. We know who one of the major uh, person is there in the uh, OPEC, and that is the Saudi Arabia folks. But let me read you this one uh, piece in here. OPEC sees the demand for crude rising by 1.8 million barrels per day to 106.2 million barrels per day next year. That's pretty significant with the OECD region expecting to bring uh, 0.1 million barrels of that 1.8 million barrel per day growth and non-OECD realizing the lion's share at 1.7 million barrels per day growth. Um, the OPEC's output for the 2024 was unchanged. Uh, but I'll tell you, this is pretty cool because when we sit back and take a look, Saudi Aramco said uh, this past week that it had been instructed by the kingdom to stop work on its plans to increase oil capacity to 13 million barrels per day, instead keeping it at the current uh, 12 million. Smart move by the kingdom. Both of these stories go together with the visualizing uh, the U.S., and the OPEC, uh, you got to hand it to Saudi Aramco and the Saudis. So let's go to NDP, anti-fossil fuel advertising draft legislation worthy of both the 1956 Soviet RSFSR criminal code or the other end of the political spectrum. Uh, Terry, I affectionately call you grumpy and uh, you went all out on this story. The CIA, bless their hearts, translated the 1956 Soviet RSFSR criminal code, which is the uh, Yulgani Codex, if you run in the circles. Um, this is pretty funny. It is uh, Charlie Angus's bill C-372, an act respective to fossil fuel advertising. And um, they're looking to cut the advertising. And if you speak negatively, excuse me, positively about this is just nuts. It is prohibited for a person to promote fossil fuel or the production of fossil fuel in a manner that states or suggests that fossil fuel or the practices of a producer or of the fossil fuel industry would lead to positive outcomes in relation to the environment, health, Canadians, and reconciliation of the indigenous people or the Canadian go, go, global economy. Holy smokes, Batman, you can't buy this kind of entertainment. We have to deal in sustainability. Sustainability is low-cost energy that you don't have to print money. Uh, the only reason that the world is uh, reducing their carbon is getting off of coal, like in the United States, uh, cutting 22% of their carbon output. Why? They did reduce their coal plants, but the EIA for two years in a row stated that it was because of the increased in natural gas plants. So, I would be just now arrested uh, for being able to say that the EIA, the U.S. government, uh, said that it was a good thing for us to lower our carbon output by using natural gas. This is a terrible way for the uh, Canadian government to just flat go way off the deep end as far as I can. And uh, Terry... God bless you for bringing this up. Uh, please follow, reach out and uh, follow uh, Terry at the BOE and buy his book. Uh, it is um, Ending the Fossil Fuel Insanity. I think you need to write a whole new chapter here, Terry. Let's go over to York and Lancaster legislators unite to oppose a 2.3 billion hydroelectric project in uh, Saskatchewan. Kanawha. Boy, I just, that was my Tex Oak, Oak Tex, uh, butchering that bad dog. 
uh, at the John Wright restaurant in Wrightsville, uh, Smucker Lancaster and other officials made their opposition clear. Let me read you this quote. There is so much more that brings these countries together than divides us. Uh, I think the river itself unites both countries, Mucker said, as we elected officials representing both countries to stand here today to announce our opposition to the preliminary permit application submitted to the FERC uh, for proposed construction of hydroelectric pump storage facility at the Cuffs Run proposed by York Energy Storage, LLC. You got to hand it to folks. And this is up. Um, uh, and uh, I, I, the NIMBYs, not in my backyard. Um, you got to love it. If you're over here saying, let's get rid of fossil fuels, let's use renewables. Hydro is one of the best ones out there, but not in my backyard. This reminds me of Senator Kennedy uh, when he was alive. He had all the wind farms. Go and he stopped because he didn't like the view. A NIMBY is a NIMBY is always will be a NIMBY. So if you can't have your renewables, you're going to be out of luck because in New York, they are wiping out fossil fuels. I vote that we let them. I don't have any say in it. Governor Holcomb, go ahead, wipe out all of the um, fossil fuels in uh, New York. Go ahead. No food deliveries, no diesel, no natural gas. And let's see what happens. And let's use this as an experiment. And again, this is all about humanity and being positive. Let's have some serious fun here, though. Let's roll around to Russia. Uh, I'm flying all the way around to the pond here. Russia extends LNG supplies to German player until 2040. Um, Russia's Yamal LNG project is now able to continue exporting LNG to Germany's SEFE after Moscow extended its exemption from sanctions imposed against the company. Um, this is pretty cool from the standpoint that um, when the Kremlin banned all the Russian companies from dealing with the SEFE after it was created in mid 20, um, Novatek. Uh, led Yamal LNG operator has a long-term contract with the German company to supply 2.0 million tons per annum of LNG. Um, what you're going to see, and that is, I believe the fallout from the Tucker Carlson interview is actually going to um, end the war. I'm going to go ahead and call it. I've said it earlier that we are not going to be able to continue if we go ahead and see that the um, uh, Biden administration in the Senate, they just passed that funding bill, but the war is not sustainable. Uh, the war cannot go on any further. And I believe that Zelensky is going to be removed by the Ukrainians and the powers that be. He was put in place. I think they can take him out. The war has failed. President Putin and President Zelensky agreed early on. Tucker brought out the point that um, that Boris Johnson came in and at the Biden administration's bidding uh, tubed the negotiations. And there is a couple articles out there that are phenomenal describing why russia went after it do i agree with putin no i don't know i don't know all of the things that he knows is he trying to take care of russia first yes has he killed millions um i i'm gonna say yeah it's not been a good thing but he has been pushed so am i saying positive things no i'm saying that we as americans are not told 100 percent of everything so I hope nobody misreads into that with everything that we do here. Uh, reach out. Uh, if you're an industry leader in oil and gas or nuclear, wind, solar, we need all forms of energy in order to uh, re uh, reduce energy poverty around the world. I'm a humanitarian first, 
please uh, subscribe, like, uh, and uh, again, thank you for all of our wonderful followers and uh, all of our podcasts. We have lots of podcasts coming out and uh, some great guests as well, too. Have a great one. Talk to you all soon.